Hi guys, in our lesson 143, I will teach you the futuro perfecto del indicativo. This is one of the several future tenses that we have in Spanish, but unlike the simple future that we have already seen, in this future we have in the sentence two different moments in the future, but one is or, or it will happen immediately before the other one, right? If you remember our previous lesson, when I taught the preterito anterior, we spoke of uh, a sentence that has two different moments in the past where one happened immediately before the other one. This is uh, similar, but in the future. One happens immediately before the other moment, although they are both in the future. But I will show you that with an ex example very soon. Before we step into the topic, you can see all the uh, different tenses that we have in Spanish. And uh, we will actually learn all these, right? Now we are in Futuro Perfecto, although we haven't followed the same, um, the same order we have in this page, okay? So this page is for the tenses that we call Modo Indicativo. And this other page shows us the six tenses of the modo or tiempos de subjuntivo, right? In total, I think we have 22 tenses because I prepared 22 different lessons uh, to teach you all the different tenses in Spanish. So let's begin with the verbs of the first group, that is the verbs that end with the letters AR, okay? This is the first group of Spanish verbs and the biggest group also. One example of this group is the verb hablar or to speak and we will use this verb to conjugate. Futuro perfecto then. Example, yo habré hablado. This means I will have spoken, okay? Here we have a a sentence where we can understand, we can see when and how this tense is applied, okay? Listen well. Para cuando llegues a casa, yo ya habré hablado con todos. Again. Para cuando llegues a casa, yo ya habré hablado con todos. This means, by the time you get home, I will have already spoken with everybody. By the time you get home, I will have already spoken with everybody. So we have a sentence that has two different moments in the future, right? But one, uh, one will happen immediately before the other one. Look at this. By the time you get home, that is one, I will have already spoken with everybody. That is the other moment in the future. So both are in the future, but which one, which one comes... Which one comes immediately before? I will have already spoken with everybody, right? The word already shows us that this has already happened or will have alre already happened by the time you get home, okay? So this second part, the one that, ha that will happen immediately before, there's when we use the futuro perfecto. In Spanish, you can see it here. Yo... Ya habré hablado con todos, or yo ya habré hablado con todos, okay? The uh, futuro perfecto, you can see it in these words, habré hablado, right? Habré is the auxiliary verb, and hablado is the verb hablar, or to speak. Here you can see we will use the auxiliary verb haber, that means to have or to be. So, beginning with I, yo habré hablado, tú habrás hablado, él habrá hablado, or ella habrá hablado, or usted habrá hablado, nosotros habremos hablado, vosotros habréis hablado, ustedes habrán hablado, ellos habrán hablado. 
So please note here how ustedes and ellos always conjugate the same, right? Although ellos means they and ustedes means you plural, same as vosotros, right? However, vosotros has a different conjugation, although it means the same thing as ustedes. Vosotros is used in Spain and ustedes is used in Latin America, okay? Now, um, usted. Usted is the formal subject pronoun that is used for you or tú. However, the tú is informal or friendly and usted is respectful or formal. Remember that Spanish is a formal language. Now we will continue with the second group of Spanish verbs, the second classification. This is the group of verbs that end with the letters ER. And our example will be using the verb comer. Comer means to eat. Yo habré comido. I will have eaten. Here's our sentence, our example sentence. Para cuando llegues a casa, yo ya habré comido. Para cuando llegues a casa, yo ya habré comido. By the time you get home, I will have already eaten. So here you can identify the two different moments in the future. By the time you get home is one. And the other one is, I will have already eaten. Which one happened immediately before the other? The second one, right? I will have already eaten. The word already shows us that this one has happened immediately before the other one, right? So here's when we where we use the, the futuro perfecto. You can see it here in Spanish. Yo ya habré comido. Habré comido. So, para cuando llegues means for when you arrive. A casa is to, to home, right? Yo is I. Ya means uh, uh, already. Habré comido. I will have already eaten, right? So, yo habré comido. Tú habrás comido. Él or ella or usted habrá comido. Nosotros habremos comido. Vosotros habréis comido. Ustedes habrán comido. Ellos habrán comido. So you can see here how the ending of the verb comer, here it is comido, changes uh, when compared with the previous verb, when we conjugated the verb hablar, right? For hablar, we added the ending ado, A-D-O, or A-D-O. And for comer, we added the ending I-D-O, ido, or I-D-O. This is because the first one, hablar, belonged to the first group of verbs, the ones that ended in A-R. And this one belongs to the second group of verbs, the ones that belong to that end with er, right? So the the ending, right, or the rule, the conjugate conjugation rule changes slightly, right? Now let's pass to our third and last uh, classification of Spanish verbs, that is the ones that end with the letters ir. And our example will be the verb vivir or to live yo habré vivido i will have lived and this is our ex ex example uh, sentence para cuando muera yo ya habré vivido bastante i wrote the word yo that is the subject pronoun i between brackets because in spanish we we it's we always can omit the subject pronoun right unless it adds any additional information that is really uh, indispensable for uh, for understanding the, the meaning of the sentence right so here we, we can and we usually omit it here so i will read it again omitting the